by Barack Obama's speech when he said, quote unquote, when women succeed, nations are more safe, secure, and prosperous. And um, Kofi Annan, the seventh UN General Secretary, also reinstates that, um, quote unquote, there is no tool for development more effective than the empowerment of women. Well, thank you very much, Women Enterprise Alliance, for putting this together for all of us to enjoy and have an experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for us to usher in our keynote speaker. Our theme for this conference is a 360 degree woman. When you think about 360 degrees, what comes to mind? What comes to mind is totality. What comes to mind is perfection. What comes to mind is multifaceted. What comes to mind is diversity. This is what 360 degree is all about. So you put together 360 degree and you ask yourself, who is the 360 degree woman? Ladies and gentlemen, we are very privileged to have a notable leader in the financial services industry. She is the credit and risk management specialist. She actually joined the board of Access Bank in November 2007 and served as a chairman of credit and finance committee until her appointment as a chairman of the bank's board in July 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, she also led the bank's philosophy at a point in time to focus on the advancement of women through the W initiative by creating specialized products or programs specifically designed for women, such as the W Power Loan, which address specific needs in three key areas, career, entrepreneurship, and family life. Okay. She believes in the power of the woman. She is actually currently the principal consultant program director of the KRC Limited, a boutique human resources support company providing training solutions for organizations in the financial services sector. Permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to say that she is very outspoken, articulate, <laughs> and immensely passionate about women's rights. She does not hide the fact that one of her many purposes is to empower women for the betterment of the society. Ladies and gentlemen, what a way and what a keynote speaker we have in this conference. Please help me welcome Mrs. Mosun Bello Olusoga. Ladies and gentlemen, show some love for this powerful woman. Hi. Hi, Kwesi. Thank you so much for your um, flattering introduction. I'm really <laughs> humbled and flattered. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> it's um, great to be here amongst my fellow women and uh, my compatriots. And um, good afternoon everywhere and anywhere you are in the world. It's my um, pleasure to be here. And I'd like to congratulate my sister Aisha for bringing this um, conference together. A lot of people don't do anything because they don't know how to. But for you to bring this um, virtual conference together, it's a kudos to you. And thank you for all the people that are back. And I'll be stressing um, Victor and Yemi, so let me thank them up front. Um, we can start, right, Kwesi? Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming that Kwesi says uh, we can start. So please bring up my slides. Yami? Yami? My slides, please. Okay, so um, while my slides are being um, brought up, um, when we talk about the 360 degree woman, um, essentially, like Kwesi said, we're talking about um, a woman who is complete. So in terms of um, herself, in terms of her family, in terms of her career, and so it's all encompassing. For, for me, a woman is, um, is a very versatile human being that God created specially, where um, multitasking and we wear um, so many caps. I, I always have this image at the back of my mind that you see a woman, she's um, in the kitchen cooking with a baby by her side, with the phone in her ear and she's tearing the pot of stew. So she's talking to her office, she's um, looking after her child and also making sure her family is, um, is um, well um, nourished. 
So that's how I see a woman. But one thing I would uh, disagree with um, Kwesi is he said it's um, perfection. I, I think a lot of women seek perfection. And I just say, just try your best. Um, it's only God that is perfect. You can only um, try your best. But for this um, um, seminar or the conference, I've tried to limit, because when you say 360 degree, it's very wide, very broad. So for me, I'm going to um, limit it to, um, I'm going to have a sub theme and I'm going to address my sub theme as um, uh, bracing up for tomorrow. So what do you need to do as a 360 degree woman to brace up for tomorrow? But tomorrow can't be started without knowing where we are today. And um, I like this John Maxwell's uh, book. He has a book called The 360 Degree Leader. And in his book, John Maxwell says, he makes a valid point. And whether a woman or a man, as long as you're a human being, you're a leader. And I think for every woman, we need to take care or we need to take cognizance of what is um, being said. And he says that for a 360 degree leader, man or woman, you have to be better tomorrow than you are today. So every day has to be about continuous improvement. And for me, I say, take today. Tomorrow for anyone is not guaranteed, especially these days. So your tomorrow is not guaranteed. So what you have today is what you know, and that is why it is called the present. It is today, because you don't know about tomorrow. Your tomorrow is not guaranteed. And I'm saying that let your today be better than your yesterday and your tomorrow be better than your today. So it's about continuous improvement every day that, you're, that God has given you the will to live. Now, let's quickly go around what um, history tells us. History gives us an insight um, about tomorrow. I'm going to focus a little bit on where we are now about the coronavirus and um, yeah, COVID-19. In 2000, December 2019, China alerts the um, WHO, the World Health Organization, about several pneumonia cases. So we have a health challenge. And in January 2020, WHO identifies the virus and we recorded the first death. And this was recorded in Wuhan, a province in China. So Wuhan now quarantined its people and they also recognized, or China also recorded a number of cases outside Wuhan, but in China. Come February, 2020, a lot of countries started restricting travel and lockdown began globally. So you say that in December and um, um, December, January, you had health challenges. Then come February, social practices started um, coming in. And by March 2020, WHO had declared the virus as being pandemic, global. And February 27th, we had our first index case um, with the Italian coming into Nigeria. So by 23rd of March, if, I, if I'm, uh, if I'm right, um, President Buhari decided that flights were no longer allowed into Nigeria. So we started our own lockdown in March. Come June, a lot of countries started easing off the lockdown, Nigeria inclusive. And Nigeria's case, it was a, 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 the case of um, a number of people are saying that, um, look, we're daily paid workers, we don't have access to feed our families. So the government decided to ease the um, lockdown somewhat, right? So globally, there has been economic meltdown. But tomorrow is the big question, right? We have a global 
crisis on our hands. Um, please change the slides. I'm three slides ahead of you. So now for tomorrow, we don't have any cure. There are no vaccines that have been developed yet. There's speculation that, okay, we might get vaccines by December. Some are saying, no, it's going to come in in 2021. Some are saying it can be as far as even 2022. Businesses have <laughs> tremendously slowed down. There's no money. And a lot of people don't even have a plan as to what is going to happen. Can you please um, go um, slides, three slides, please? Now, our biggest challenge worldwide is a question of uncertainty, right? What we know, let me tell you what we know. Everybody knows this. There have been lo loss of lives, right? And increasing health complications. Worldwide, active cases have number almost 4 million people have been affected. Although 5.2 million people as at today have recovered. But we've had over approximately 500,000 deaths. Nigeria, we've had about 14,000 active, we have about 14,000 cases, right? About 550 deaths have been recorded and counting, but we have about 7,800 people that have been cleared of the virus. On a global scale, there has been decline in GDP. In 2019, Nigeria recorded a GDP growth of between 1.9 and 2.2%. And this is estimated to decline to about 3.4% come 2020. US is even worse than us. It's a, it's a, it's a much bigger economy. But the negative growth in 2020 has been estimated to be about 20, uh, uh, to be estimated to be almost 6% for 2020. We also know that there has been loss of business, especially for the service and small businesses, right? Globally. And the most affected because of the lockdown of countries has been the airline business, right? A lot of uh, if there if lockdown, so people um, countries are um, countries do not allow flights. So most airlines have been grounded. Unemployment is even next slide, please. Unemployment is also getting worse, according to NECA right, in Nigeria, unemployment will increase from 23.1% uh, to about 33% in 2020, right? So that means a, a third of the population of Nigeria would be unemployed. I'm not even talking about underemployment. And youth employment, youth unemployment, especially is estimated to reach about 55%. This is alarming. And when we're talking about youth, Nigeria has classified youth to be uh, people between the ages of 15 and 35. So more than half of this set of people are going to be unemployed by the end of 2020. And when you have loss of business and very high unemployment, what you can be sure about is that there will be um, security challenges. So safety and security, you know, they say the devil um, finds work for the idle hand. So you'll be seeing a lot of um, security challenges, safety challenges, especially because of youth unemployment. So that is what we know. However, <laughs> there are some things that we don't know. We don't know 
when and how this pandemic will end. There's been several speculations, oh, it's going to end summertime because of the heat. The heat will burn off the um, virus. We don't know. Some are saying, no, don't expect anything until towards the end of the year. Some are saying, no, 2020. Some are saying, no, it's going to even last till 2021. We don't know. And we also don't know what's going to happen post-COVID. Now, when you have uncertainty, there are different responses by people. So a lot of people have typical re uh, responses to, uh, um, to uncertain times. Number one, they might be fearful. So the first thing is that they are fear. Fear of the unknown, right? Fear of unknown um, either events, situations, or territories. But you know, John Maxwell says fear is, you can define fear as forget everything and run or face everything and rise. The decision is just. So Jews want to just be like um, an ostrich with your head in the sand and, and run away from the problems, or you want to brace up to the challenge and rise above it. There are some people, they binge on news. So you'll find your, 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 your television stations permanently on news, CNN, and you're watching, okay, what is the, um, well, what are the statistics saying? You're watching the news, local news, international news for what's, or how many people have died, how many people have survived, you know? And if you have a cough, you're saying, oh, is it corona? Uh, if you're sneezing, is it corona? Everybody is guilty of this. So there's binge on news. Then there might be bias in our vision and focus. A lot of people will not even, they don't know what is going on and, oh, they now choose who to believe, which station to believe. You know, in America, I find it very, very interesting. Once in a while, when I decide to look at um, CNN, so there are some people who will listen to what the president is saying, and there are some people who will listen to what the doctors are saying. So the people who are listening to what the president is saying say, look, there's no point using face masks, it won't catch us. And there are some people who are saying, look, this thing is very, very real. Some people are actually exaggerating, right? And some people are ignoring the facts. So there's, um, it, it depends on which spectrum you have. And some people, it, a response can be, Become being in a, on the overdrive, right? An overdrive means that you tend to do too much. You cramp a lot of things, right? So you don't even have a breather. Or it can be paralysis. And paralysis means that you do absolutely nothing, right? Neither is good, right? And for, for, for a lot of people, most responses keep us unprepared for the future. So you have to respond. And I like what um, Stephen Covey says. He says we need to be respond to respond to situations, to events, rather than to react to them. You know, a lot of us react instead of respond to situations. And when you respond to situation, it's being in control of how you respond to certain things. Now, how do we cope with uncertainty? I like to use the analogy of athletes. But the hope for the best and the crouch low. You know, just imagine when there is a race to go, whether it is long distance or a sprint. If it is a sprint, they go right down on their knees. If it is a long distance, they still crouch low, right? In that um, posture, they are waiting for the signal. They rehash everything they have been through. They might be nervous, but they are alert and they are ready to move. So once that gun 
is fired, they are propelled and they move forward. That posture is what you call hunker down, right? It gives them momentum. If, if you just recall how a sprinter is, they have some starting blocks at their heels. So that propels them forward. And for the long distance runner, the, the stance they have is also uh, helps them propel forward. So hunker down gives them momentum and a sense of readiness to push to whatever the every uncertainty in that race. And the hunker down theory emerged, it, uh, first emerged in the Scots language. Hunker, it's the word, emerged in the Scots language in the 18th century. It originally referred to squatting down on the balls of one's feet, keeping low on the ground, but still ready to move when necessary. So when you hunker down, that means you're ready to move. So you stay on your heels and whenever you're, uh, when, whenever it's time to move, you, uh, you move. Be it a soldier, be it athlete, anything, you know, just look at um, everybody. They, they crouch down and even animals, you know, when, an, when, 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 when a lion wants to attack, it crouches down, then it leaps up, right? So that's the hunker down um, theory. So look at the in introspective um, uh, um, um, posture. When you're looking at the uh, um, hunker down, you look at what is my being, right? What is my training, my skill, my experience, my SWOT analysis, you do your SWOT analysis, my, the resources that I have, and what are the things I'm grateful for, right? Your introspective analysis starts with yourself first, right? If you, if you, if you can't, uh, uh, you know, I love the saying that if you don't love yourself, nobody will love you. And I believe self-love is not selfish because you have to be good with yourself because you can, before you can give yourself to other people. So a healthy mind, a sound mind, a sound healthy body is all necessary for your own state of um, perfect um, uh, um, self-being. And I say to you, be in a state of mindfulness. Mindfulness means that you are conscious of what you are, who you are. I listened to um, one of the um, one of um, my facilitators. We got a facilitator for my school, and I really loved what she said. And she said, "Remember, you are the sky, and everything is the weather. Meaning, the sky is constant; it's always there." You might have some cloudy period. You might have a rainy period, a sunny period. Yes, all those things are there. However, there is the constant. Tough times, sad times, they don't last forever, right? Unfortunately, neither does good time last. So we have to have the perseverance. We have to have the patience to walk through those uh, 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 periods in our lives and be grateful for whatever situations that we find ourselves. So I'm saying keep your mind healthy. Read things that will develop your mind. I love motivational books. I love autobiographies of successful people. And it gives you an insight as to what they have done to be able to succeed at whatever they are. I, I, I like books that are very true, very honest, and that um, is not all about their successes. They also talk about their failures. You know, I like um, uh, Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, because she tells you her struggles and she tells you her triumphs. Nobody alive can say they have a perfect life. So I'm saying to women, please don't seek perfection. When you seek perfection, there's a tendency for you to get discouraged, 
right? That, oh, things are not working out and that um, um, I have challenges. If you are alive, you will always have a problem. It is only the people that are in the cemetery that don't have a problem. So problems are a sign of life. And problems are challenges that are meant to be uh, uh, um, addressed. You face your challenges. Win some, do some. There is not all the time that you overcome some challenges. Some challenges, you, 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 they, 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 they might be there and you might not be able to um, solve the challenge, but at least try your best. I'm a firm believer in trying your best and trusting God to do the best for you. It's not all the time that your best is good enough and don't beat yourself over it. And another thing about your, your being is don't binge of negative news, right? Don't binge on negative news. You know, yeah, things are happening around. Yeah, good things, you know. I, 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 people laugh at me when, um, when I ask, her, how are you, how you doing now? And people say, ah, you go better. I say, if it be worse, so, so let's thank God. Yeah, it can be better, but it can also be a lot worse. And again, when people actually die, I'm saying that maybe the worst thing to happen to somebody is not even death, right? So in everything, in every situation, there is always cause to thank God. And for me, I'm also saying that you have to be able to say you can't do it all. Know when you require help and don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel less of a human being. Don't feel less of a person. If you ask for help, ask for help, seek for help. So it can be in terms of your family. So I need help for, for, for somebody to take care of my children. I need help at work. I need help for you know, somebody to even, for me to be able to talk to somebody, to be able to chat to somebody. You know, they say at times, somebody even listening to you is enough. You, you have, um, you vent. And for you, it, it, please don't say, don't think it's, it reduces you when you say you have a problem. A lot of us have uh, medical issues. Some have um, problems with their spouses. Some have problems with their children. With all the efforts that you have put in place, you might not have a perfect marriage. With all the efforts that you have put in place for your children, you might not have the perfect children, but at least do your best, trust God, and say, look, I, I, I did my best. And because women are doing a lot, I said we are multitaskers, um, um, we, uh, we do everything, we want to be everything to everybody. But you can't be everything to everybody without being good in yourself. So I'm asking my fellow women to take time for their own self. Take time to rest, to relax, and also do some of the things that you enjoy doing. Take time for yourself. Because if you're good, then you, you can be good to other people. But when you're tired and cranky, the little thing that your spouse does or your children do, you're, you're just, um, you, you just overreact. So just take time to relax, take time to rest, and also please take time at times, say no to things. And be okay when you say no. You can't do everything at uh, um, uh, uh, all the time. With all sense of humility, I get invited to a lot of boards, but I know there's only so many boards I can sit on. If you take too many things, then it just waters down the quality you bring to the table because you are unable to do everything. You can't do everything to everyone. So say no to some things, and those things that you accept, do it to the best of your ability. So your heart, your body, your soul, your mind all have to be in congruence. Then you look at what skills you possess. And I'm going to tell you what I believe the skills that are highly recommended for the future. Anybody and everybody who doesn't know how to use technology, 
have to know how to use technology. We're doing virtual conference. I, 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 my bread and butter is training. And we're, um, we're doing some training when this pandemic stopped. So we had to convert to online training. Some of my facilitators were not comfortable with online. But if you're not comfortable, how would you not train? So everybody had to upskill. So you have to learn how to do, how to use technology to enable your business. You have to know about communications. You have to be creative, innovative in whatever business that you do. You know the business that are thriving these days, logistics, deliveries, because everybody has to sit at home now. So if you are not in that realm, a lot of people close to their, their offices, like I've, I've told you, I have a school. So we had to convert to online, online training, online schooling. People who have supermarkets now have to do deliveries. So they have, now have to have their uh, um, web pages that people can uh, uh, um, order online and deliver. So you have to be creative. You have to be uh, um, innovative. And you have to be resilient because it is somebody who is uh, 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 who, who survives today that will thrive tomorrow. So at times, you, you know, it, it might not even be a case of making money today. It might be a case of what is your purpose for today. So it's purpose over profit. So you have to be in existence today to be able to survive and make money tomorrow. So number one, survive. Make sure that your business survives. Make sure that you survive. So when you yourself survive, it's about taking charge of your health, taking charge of your children, uh, your family's health, right? It is only that person that survives today that will be available tomorrow to do whatever. So resilience in terms of your person, in terms of your business. And you have to be agile. Your business have, have to be agile. And I like the word when people are saying there's some businesses that are traditional, but you have to be trad agility is what they call it now. So yes, merge or combine your traditional business with agility, because if you stay constant in one position, you will not be able to address the needs of your customers because customers' needs are different, are changing on a daily basis. The person that, uh, um, Zoom, I've forgotten what his name was. In a couple of years ago, he was almost bankrupt, right? Today, he's a billionaire. So you have to be, be present today to be able to be um, there tomorrow. And you're also talking about in emotional intelligence. Again, mindfulness comes in. You know, when you're mindful, what are you doing? How is your response to situations? How are you responding to events? Then we go to what are my experiences? What are your experiences? What lessons have you learned? What lessons have you learned from your own life's journey so far? My own lessons are, number one, put God first, because there are so many things that are beyond your control. My lessons, again, are do your best. Most of the time, when you do your best, you have the satisfaction that you have done your best. And most of the time, you, your best is usually good enough. A lot of people regret what they don't do, not what they do. So it's, a, it's a, oh, I wish I had done that. So if it comes to your mind, do it. So what are your lessons? What are your life lessons from the journey that you have embarked on so far? And what lessons can I learn from uh, um, other people? This um, lockdown, I, I look at um, a lot of YouTube and I've been binging on Oprah, Maya Angelou, Michelle Obama, even entertainers like J. Lo. You'll be surprised how much effort, how much thought goes into whatever they're doing. Beyonce, you know, so I, I, I like looking at that. Okay, you just think, oh, they just go and dance and, and, and that is all. No. When Beyonce did Coachella, it took her almost a year to get ready for that performance. A year. 
a year of diligence, a year of hard work. You know, she will show you her feet bleeding. There was a time, one of her performances, she said she lost one of her shoes. The strap got caught. Um, so it was one of these trappy sandals. I'm sure ladies will know what I mean. She had to dance throughout with one, sh one, 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 one shoe and the other on her tiptoes. That is resilience. That is a professional, right? So be professional. So what lessons are you learning from other people? There have to be people that you admire. Right, I love autobiographies, so I, I read autobiographies of local people, um, my paramount ruler, Kabiesi Awujale, Adetono. You know, I read a lot, Cosmos Maduka, um, people that uh, have given me the books. Okay, this is not, not uh, autobiography. I have my, my friend, Pastor Simon. He's reading, he's written um, books about how can, you can use prayer to succeed in life. My, my darling, my darling ID. ID is um, a, a, um, somebody I love so much. ID makes me look good, right? She handles my teaching. She handles my presentations and things like that. So when I'm doing presentation, know that there's somebody who is beating the drum behind. So ID, I'm using this opportunity to thank you. And that is why I say, don't be, don't be, don't be shy to ask for help when you, when you need help. So it is a requirement. We all need help from time to time. And I'm sure when you, when, when you ask for help, people are willing, if they can do it, they will do it for you, right? Don't pretend that you are perfect, that you can do it all. And be conscientious in applying life's lessons. So I'm talking about mindfulness and being responsive rather than being reactive. Then you do your SWOT analysis, right? Your strengths, weaknesses, the opportunities are available to you and what things that you consider the threats to your existence, right? What are your strengths? What are the threats that spur you on? And I'm saying be confident in your capabilities, in what you know right? While being humble. I tell people, I'm a, with all sense of humility, I'm a very good credit officer. I'm a good banker. And it comes from experience. It comes from honing my skills, right? But I'm also saying that in spite of my being good, I don't know it all. So when I train, even when, you know, I'm training entry-level people, people who haven't been born, when I've had 10, 15 years experience, right? And I tell them like, look, you people are young. So there is no class that I go to without learning. So that means that I'm, I'm humble and I'm always willing to say, I don't know about that one, please let me go and research or you tell me what it is. So be humble in what you, you know and what you don't know. It's going to be embarrassing and sad for you when you give wrong information. So people who have known you, right? You give wrong information, wrong data. Once you give them and they find you out, then everything you say is going to be doubtful. So be confident about your capabilities and continuously sharpen on your skills. That is why I read a lot. I'm humble, I'm willing to learn in spite of my gray hairs but it's wisdom here, right? Then you also determine what are your weaknesses, right? There is no human being that doesn't have weaknesses. There is no person that is perfect, right? So the first step is to acknowledge this is where I am weak. I, I, I tell people, yes, I'm a very good credit officer, but you know, I know what I like, I know what I don't like, but I'm not the most creative person, right? But I can, I, 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 I can uh, um, develop something. But creativity is what I'm working on. So it's a weakness of mine, but I'm working on it, right? So the first thing is for you to acknowledge that, oh, I have a weakness in this area. The Yoruba is saying that it is the child that lifts up his hand that the parents will carry. 
So if a child is um, there and you're just cooing, but once the child lifts up his hand, the automatic response is for you to be able to carry the child because, oh, this child wants to be carried. So know your weaknesses, acknowledge them. That's the first step of getting solution to them. Then what opportunities are available to you? Like I've told you, right? I could have said, oh, we can't do physical training. Therefore, don't, um, let's, um, let, let's just, um, let's just um, wait until the situation improves. <coughs> Excuse me. However, when we do meet, wait, hunger will kill somebody. So we have to be creative. So we say, okay, there are opportunities. A lot of people are using Zoom. They use Microsoft. This hopping is, is new to me, but it's also a platform that can be used. So um, the opportunities, I was talking about deliveries, online deliveries, you know, online ordering and deliveries. So that is, um, that is an opportunity that happened and the logistic company. I know, I know people who didn't even have logistic company that set up logistic company to be able to take advantage of the present situation. So it's an opportunity and people will latch on to the opportunity. Then the, their, their threats. So how can you um, deal with threats? A lot of people who, who, were, who were not doing training before can now say, oh, I can actually do training from the comfort of my, 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 my home. I don't have to go far. And you can do anything anywhere in the world, right? So, for, for, so that means that your, your, your competitors are not your next door neighbor anymore. They are people worldwide, right? So your competitors are worldwide. Therefore, the threats are worldwide for you. So those are the threats. And once you have the idea that, okay, these are um, threats, then you can be in a position to, to address the threats. Then again, you look at what resources do I have? You look at resources in terms of people. I've told you about my darling ID. I've told you, you know, there are some people that I go to. My brother is one of the wisest people that I know. So I bounce things off him. So for me, my older sister is somebody that I can say, please, can you come and help me? Uh, uh, um, my, my, my daughter is going to be on vacation in England. I don't, I can't, I can't go. Can you please go? You know, my sisters, I'm, I'm blessed because I'm surrounded by people who love me and who will do a lot for me. You know, I have so many friends, too many to mention. Kafilas, Mrs. Z, Mrs. O, you know, my, my, my brothers from another mother, Herbert, Aigi, you know, I can call them and they know I'm not frivolous. I have too many to, 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 to mention. So I have a lot of people and I'm mindful about what I ask of them, but I'm also not shy in asking. So, you know, you say, okay, I have these resources that are available to me. So make um, use of the resources that are available. How about the tools that you have? It can be in terms of these online platforms that we have. It can be, you know, tools are the materials. It can be in terms of books. I, I, I love books. I love the feel of carrying a book and just sitting down with my feet up and, and, uh, and opening the pages of, of books, you know. In terms of financing, a lot of people want to set up businesses and they think that if they don't have a huge amount, they can't set up the finance. Start small and grow. I, 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 like I told you, I have a school and my, my head of school always says, never despise little beginnings. And I say, yes, from an acorn does an oak tree grow, right? So don't say until I have millions, I can't start business. I love people who say, please come and give me money. And I say, what do you want to do? What do you say you don't know? Just give me any amount. I'm a little bit wary. I said, go and think about what you want to do. I have somebody said, um, I need money. I'm a widow. And I said, what do you want? He said, if you give me X amount, I can start this business. If you give me Y amount, I can start this business. If you give me this amount, I can start Z business. That is somebody who has thought. So now it depends on how much 
you have to do the business. So don't wait until you have a lot of money. And a lot of small businesses say, oh, because um, banks don't give money, I don't, um, I can't start the business. Yes, banks are, 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 they, they are custodians of other people's money. So they have to be careful as to who they give the money to. So if they don't see you returning the money, it's not likely. So what happens to your own savings? Let, let me share an experience with you. I, 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 I was training one of my classes and the, um, a young man came to me and, I said, and said to me that he would love to do what I'm doing. And I said, that's fantastic if you have a flair for that. But I said, you have a young family. How would your young family cope? I started this business when I had retired as a, as a banker. And in all honesty, I'm, I'm grateful to God. Whether I work or not, I can't go hungry. God has blessed me beyond that. So I said, well, you're a young man. Say, yes, that's his child. I said, look, my advice is for you. Continue working for a number of years. Save some money. Because your, your wife has to eat. Your children are still very, very young. And you two have to survive, right? Then after that period, you can now say, okay, I have an egg nest. Because you're a consulting training, as, as well as people know me, we don't get training like that. <laughs> we might go months without doing anything. That is life. So you have ups and downs. So use your eggness to be a, a platform. Then you can now say, okay, this is how much I have. I can survive on this amount for six months, for one year, even if I don't get a job. So look at the finances you have. And also, what ideas do you have? When I was going to retire from um, Guarantee Trust as an exec executive director, my um, managing director, uh, Mr. Taya Adeoko, God rest his soul, he said, what do you want to do? I said, well, I'm, I wasn't sure at that time, but I knew what I didn't want to do. And the first step is to know what you want to do. What, if you don't know what you, if, if you know what you don't want, it's a step towards what you want. So I said, I know what I don't want to do. I don't want to be a trader. I don't want to die, buy and sell. I don't want to be going to Hong Kong, uh, China to buy and sell. No, I don't want to do that. But I don't mind facilitating because even when I was in the bank, I used to facilitate for other banks. I said, well, you set up credit school. You are good in credit. Why don't you go on do that, um, doing that? So the idea might come from you. The idea might come from other people, but know what you are good at. And some people... I, I remember when we were, were chatting with Aliko, Aliko Dankote used to come to the bank a lot to share his experience. And, um, you know, I, I was um, the group head in charge of his, um, his um, companies. And that man is brilliant, you know, with all sense of he is absolutely brilliant. He'll tell you the LC they opened, how much the duty, where the LC is coming from. And at that time, he had a variety of companies. Not these days that his, uh, uh, his activities are concentrated into a few activities. He had, he had banks, he had manufacturing, he had insurance, he had until he divested and now started concentrating on certain. So he said for him, his work is his hobby. So he's passionate because he enjoys doing that. So find what you enjoy doing. And I'm sure all these people, you know, my brother from another uh, 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 mother, Herbert, enjoys banking. He enjoys solving problems. He enjoys credit. He enjoys negotiate, uh, negotiating. He enjoys it. So he thrives on that, right? So find what you enjoy doing. Find what you have passion about, uh, passion about what you are passionate about. And from your passion, you will make money. If you, are, if you are ambivalent about something, it's not likely you do it uh, uh, um, thoroughly. So find what um, you're passionate about and dig deep into it. Then you now say, what do I need tomorrow? So it can, again, be in terms of your skills, in terms of people, in terms of finances, in terms of idea. So assess what you have today and what you have, go what you want um, going forward. And I'm saying again, be grateful. Um, you know, um, 2020, I call my 2020 and beyond 
my year of gratitude, my years of gratitude. So be grateful. Plan to celebrate your wins, right? Women especially, we, we tend to see what we don't do or what we don't have rather than what we're able to do and what we're able to, uh, um, to achieve. Oh, it's, oh, my daughter is not doing this rather than my daughter did this. Guilty as charged. I'm sure all of us, <laughs> all of us are guilty. I, 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 I took something from something that went viral. I'm sure a lot of you um, uh, um, saw it. A professor came in and gave people blank sheets and said they should write an essay, you know, with one small dot. And a lot of people started writing about that speck of dust on the total um, blank sheet, white sheet. Oh, this, uh, the, the dot is uh, um, 200 centimeters away from the right edge, 400 centimeters away from the, the breadth of the, and it's exactly, we focus on those tiny specks rather than being grateful for everything, right? Yes, you know, people have challenges. I wake up each morning because there was a time I couldn't lift up my hand. So whenever I lift up my hand, it's to say thank you. Whenever I'm doing my exercise and the instructor say lift up your hand and I can lift it up, it's to say thank you. Whenever I turn in bed and I'm able to turn, rather than somebody turning me, I'm saying thankful. If I'm able to eat, I'm saying thankful. So once you have that grateful or thankful mentality, you know, you tend to appreciate things and you tend to focus on what you are thankful for rather than what you do not have. You know, people say, oh, what challenges have you uh, had in the past? I said, look, I'm, I've been blessed. I've been highly favored. As my miss, sister, Mrs. O says, you are blessed and highly favored. Yes, that is me. So I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I don't uh, I consider challenges. I consider more on what God has blessed me with. So have that mentality all the time. Be grateful for being, for you even being alive. Be grateful. So you might have health challenges, you might have family problems, you might have financial problems, but be grateful for whatever situation that you'll find yourself. Pat yourself on the back from time to time for a job well done, right? When your spouse does well, you have contributed, whether you're a man or a woman, you have contributed. You know, my brother, you know, he says, thank my wife because she doesn't give me any stress. Because even for, for the best of human beings, if your spouse is giving you, um, your husband or your wife is giving you stress, no matter how brilliant you are, you, are, you get distracted, right? So be grateful. Pat yourself on the back and say, ah, okay, Auntie Mo, well done, you do well, eh? Right? You can't do everything well all the time. But from time to time, when you do do well, say, ah, you can say thank, for, uh, say thank God and delight in succeeding. Derive delight in succeeding, right? And to get up and learn from failure. And John, John Maxwell calls it failing forward right? You fail forward. It means that you fail and you, you say, okay, why did I fail? This, my failure is to propel me for the future. To I learn from my mistakes and it's going to be a stepping stone for me to advance even better. So fail forward, right? And I'm advising all of us to give back, right? Um, when people say give back, say, ah, how much money do I have? The Yoruba say, um, I don't know how to translate it. Okay, they, okay. Because you say it's a lot, it, it's too small. Don't let me give this man this uh, ten naira that I have. It's 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 too small. Then you become a miser. From whatever God has blessed you, give. It might not be money. It might not be financial. A kind, of, you know, the hadith. The prophet says, a smile is charity. 
lifting something from your working and you see a, a, a piece of wood or a block of stone on the floor and you remove it. It is charity. So for people that are coming will not encounter that uh, um, obstacle. So plan to give back. In terms, you know, I, I, I tell people that there was um, a lady in, in my in my bank and guarantee trust bank is room kept by making and she was collecting money for um, a lady. And apparently this lady will take women off the streets who appear to be uh, mentally imbalanced. And there was this case of this woman with a child on the street. And a lot of these people just need care, right? So she will take them, take them to Yaba and they will be nurtured back. So she had taken this woman and she was not collecting money for accommodation because if she didn't have accommodation, apparently her husband sent her out of the house. If she didn't have money for accommodation, she would go back on the street. So she was contributing. And I said to Rumke, okay, I wish I had the courage that woman has because even to, to be able to summon the courage to take somebody who is technically mad, it has to be God's grace on you. And she said, look, Auntie Mo, you can't be everything, right? You are giving money, that's something. She's giving her time, she's giving her. So if everybody does a little at a time, then the whole society will be better. So it can be just you advising people, you just even listening alone is giving back. So it's not all about money. It's all about, it's not about what you have. So it's, you know, some people say, okay, I don't have money, but I look after my church. I'll sweep the church. I'll sweep the mosque, right? I'll take care of the children. I'll give them lessons and things like that. It's all about giving back. And giving back is a way of expressing your gratitude. Right? And lastly, I'm just saying that brace up. Tomorrow is here. Everybody, we need to brace up. So go back to that stance and hunker down, right? Hunker down and just get ready to move, to leapfrog, to run, right? And that is the end of my presentation. I'm again very thankful to my sister Aisha for inviting me to share my thoughts um, um, with everybody. I'm, I'm, um, for everybody who has listened to me, for my camp here, and for Yemi Belo, who I have stressed so much, I say thank you. And I'm again acknowledging and saying thanks to um, ID for everything that she um, does for me. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Mosun Belo Olusoga. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe you learned a lot. It's either you forget everything and run, or you face everything and arise. Yes. I have personally learned from our keynote speaker. I've jotted about 10 points as my key home. First of all, use of technology, stay creative and be innovative, be conscientious in applying your life's lessons, use SWOT analysis to actually drive your strategic direction for your company or for your business, know what you're good at, be grateful, fill forward, and most importantly, give back. Wow, these are some nuggets of wisdom. You cannot have it anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. But this is the Women Enterprise Alliance Conference. Mami, thank you very, very much. Mrs. Mosun. Time will not permit us to take a lot of questions. I know some people do have uh, questions and they have actually put them up in the chat box. I would like to know, first of all, we all do know that we are living in unprecedented times. There's a downturn in the global economy. What I want to know is how important or how relevant will be specialized skills, especially for an entrepreneur in these times? Well, what kind of specialized skill? So for an entrepreneur, you have to determine what is required in the economy or in your community. Find a problem and prefer a solution. So I can't just tell you that this is it. So you have to solve a solution. That is what an entrepreneur does. Now, what is lacking in my environment and how can I prefer a solution to address that problem? So if, if you say, oh, I want to set up a business and nobody requires your services, the business will fail. It's even bad enough that most businesses, before they are five years, they collapse. I mean, globally, 70% of small businesses collapse. 
So the, 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 the trick for you to be in business, to continue to be in business, is to find a problem and prefer a solution to that problem. And that is what will make you last. Like, like for example, I, I, tell, I told you about the deliveries. I have a friend who actually set up a delivery company because of the opportunity that this um, kind of um, uh, um, uh, pandemic, right? Nobody is, most people are not going out. So she set up a delivery company. We will, we will, de uh, we will pick up your goods. We, will even, we can order through us. Place your order. See, I I'll even give you an example. During Ramadan, I'm a Muslim, right? I couldn't go out. I just said, so I have some um, of my aunties, my uncles, uh, my, my parents' friends that I normally would give um, um, Ramadan stuff to, but there was no way for me to. Then you just called to me, order. So I called um, somebody and fortunately one of my younger colleagues, um, his wife does deliver, can you do this? So I gave her a list, she did the shopping, she delivered, and uh, I paid for delivery, problem sorted all within 24 hours. So find a, uh, uh, um, a problem, find a niche and prefer a solution. And that is how you'll succeed. Wow. Um, I will have one more question for you before we wrap up with you. Um, one of the areas that is heavily affected by COVID undoubtedly would be labor and people, human resource. What we want to find out is how do you utilize the people you have to reinvent your wheel for your business? Well, it depends on what you do. Like for schools, like I told you, I have a school, right? I have a training outfit, I have a school. Normally, school is brick and mortar, right? But as soon as we knew that, okay, March was when the lockdown. Fortunately, the students were on vacation. And again, fortunately for my school, because everybody is tech, every child has a laptop and things like that. So we just brushed up the teacher's uh, uh, um, training. Uh, the, um, um, we use Microsoft Teams. So train them on Microsoft. So it's all about retraining, retooling, retooling right? We're actually doing something with the um, uh, yeah, Institute of Chartered Institute of Bankers. It's all about retraining. So what is necessary? What is required? Like for banks, a lot of banks are letting go uh, 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 um, tellers, for example, because instead of tellers, you have ATM machines, even without COVID. Right, so you don't need as many tellers as you as as you need. So if you are a teller, you need to retool, you need to reskill. So now go back to school or go back and say, okay, what can I do? I know people who have uh, 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 um, left banking to do because they have a clear a, a flair for cooking. So a lot of people are not uh, can't go out, so you can't eat out and things like that. So you have a flair for cooking, so they do food deliveries. So for people like me, for example, that I, I, I can cook, but I don't like cooking. You know, at a certain point in time, your life is that this is not um, required for me anymore, right? You know, so you order a cook, so you order food from them. So it is, okay, what skills do I have? Or what skills can I uh, uh, acquire to be able to feel or to be able to prefer a solution? I know people who do, who bake cakes, and she's actually running an online program to teach people to, 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 to bake. So she's making money from uh, um, that. So you have to reskill, retool um, yourself. Then you can now um, um, progress. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That is all time will permit us. Um, to actually engage our keynote speaker. I know most of you are in the comfort of your home smiling, especially with the level of impact, the level of knowledge, the level of nuggets shared by Mrs. Mosun Bello Olusoga. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're appreciating, I'm observing everything in the comment, in the chat box. If you appreciate Mrs. Bello Olusoga, uh, you can just type appreciate. That's how we show love on our virtual platform here. Just type appreciate and um, to encourage her with the amount of work that she's done. Thank you very much, Mrs. Muslim Bello Olusoga. We are so grateful. Thank You're welcome. you very much of the maiden edition of the Women Enterprise Alliance. We are very, very grateful, Ma. Welcome.
You're very welcome. Right. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. And so, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, we will be having a networking session. This is brought to you by the Women Enterprise Alliance. On this platform, like I told you, it will be a total experience. And our keynote speaker has touched on the 360-degree one. At this point in time, move to the left section of the screen. You see an icon, a handshake like that, on the left section of your screen um, with the inscription, Networking. So we are going to have a networking session on that platform. Five minutes of a networking session. Get to know somebody, understand the mindset of another colleague elsewhere in a different country. In five minutes, we will do so, and then we will come back for our first session for the maiden conference today. So ladies and gentlemen, make sure you get to know somebody. Once we come back, it will definitely be on a different level. Thank you very much.